Welcome back, my friends. Have you heard of the 80-20 rule? Well, in this video, I'm going to break it down, what it really means as it pertains to budgeting, and I'm actually going to tell you why I actually dislike it. So if you're ready, let's go. The Dead Demolisha TV with Sophia Meloni. Hi everyone, it's Sophia Melanie, the Debt Demolisher, here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to help you manage your financial baggage the right way. What an honor and privilege it is to be before you all for yet another episode drop on the Debt Demolisher TV, and I want to welcome you to this premiere night. This premiere night is really going to help us go into the space of recognizing what the 80-20 rule is and how it is actually tied to a budgeting rule. Many people hear this common term of the 80-20 rule where you leave 80% for the 20 because the 20 looks good, but I want to break down what the 80-20 rule looks like in terms of budgeting. So let's go ahead and pull up this item so that way you can be able to see the scale, and I'm going to tell you exactly why I do not like the 80-20 budgeting rule. Why? Because number one, 80% of your income is going to wants. 80% of your income is going to wants. Now, what is wants? You get to spend your money however you want, whenever you want, just as long as you're not leveraging 20% of it for what I'm going to cover shortly in terms of what that means. So your 80% can allow you to be as frivolous as you want. You can spend it on whatever you want to spend it on. Hopefully you will majority spend most of it on your essentials, but why would your essentials be 80% of your income? Why would your essentials be 80% of your income? That is a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. So one of the reasons why I dislike the 80-20 budget rule is because it really allows people to go to the max in their spending as it relates to the income that they earn. And it almost seems justifiable to them because there isn't really much room to allocate it and give that 80% a purpose. So oftentimes people fall into the mismanagement space because they aren't really taking a deep look at deep look at what they're spending and how they're spending in the capacity in which they do. So let's jump gears and go to the 20% so that way we, it can make sense. Let me go ahead and pull this up again so that you all can be able to see it. When you see the 20%, what is it telling us? That the 20% of your income is saved at a minimum. At a minimum, 20% of your income is saved. Granted, I think that's well. And granted, it's a good percentage. But what is the key word that's represented in here? Should at minimum. Should at minimum. So even still, they're still allowing you to have some wiggle room to play around with this 20% and not even make your savings a hardcore 20%. I do not like the 80-20 budget rule. I just don't like it. I, in my honest opinion, you should be saving more than what you spend. You should be saving more than what has to go out. And I know that it's challenging, but if you do the math, if you do the math and you find out that you are spending 80% or more of your income, this is the time where we need to reevaluate. And this is the time where I'm going to invite you to come inside of the Budget With Me live stream that is going to be held tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Every Saturday, I hold live working sessions that help us get acclimated in our finances, that help us tackle a different space within our finances. And one of the most important ones that we do every other Saturday is budget. And if you've landed on this video today, then you are so lucky because tomorrow you have an invitation to come into our working session because this 80-20 has to be readjusted. This 80-20 for you has to be pivoted. This 80-20 for you has to be transitioned 
into one of the other rules that we've covered thus far on the channel. So are you an 80-20 budget rule lady? Are you an 80-20 budget rule man? Ouch. No judgment. The only thing that I can do is ask you to reevaluate. And that's if you want to, because why? Personal finances are personal. I can't encourage you. I can't tell you. I can't force you. I could only express the exercise that could allow you to get the awareness so that you can be able to make the decision for yourself. Because until you get into that space of uncomfortableness, until you get into that space of, oh, I need to do something different, until you get into that space of, ouch, this is hurting me, as opposed to helping me, that's when you're going to want to make the change for yourself. And the only thing that I can do is extend the welcome. The only thing that I can do is create the room. The only thing that I can do is to bring the knowledge, bring the curriculum, bring the lesson plan so that you can have your awakening. Because financial awakenings happen in this room. Financial awakenings happen in this debt demolisher TV room. And I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you are here. And I'm so glad that you've landed on this video so that you can do the assessment for yourself to find out if you've been following the 80-20 budget rule. But guess what? There is still more. Yes, there is still more. There is still more. Let me see your in comments and let me see your chat. There is still more. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. There is still more. That's right. So tomorrow, I want to welcome you to come on back so that you can learn another budgeting tool. And that way you can be able to assess if you fall within this other budgeting rule that I'm getting ready to introduce to you. Remember, your financial prosperity awaits you and so does your financial sanity. You already know what I'm going to tell you to do and that's what? Get to work. All right. Bye. The Debt Demolisher TV with Sophia Meloni. The Debt Demolisher TV with Sophia.